you have a fan three standard here we are going to be making a drop mechanism we're going to be using this little uh, payload release I got off eBay it was just a few bucks uh, pretty cheap uh, the guy on eBay basically is making these with a 3d printer and you can kind of see the roughness of it where the where it was all laid up um, and Selena my daughter here is helping me film this so what we want to do is you can see how this works when the servo moves it releases and drops now this is, tends to be something where you have like a key ring otherwise something could slip through this crack here but this would be a good way servo moves whatever you have drops free so it needs to be something that's excuse me suspended from above so what we're going to do is we're going to use the phantom 3 and we're going to have something like this and this is going to be set up so that this suspends from above uh, well this will be right below this plate we're going to use this plate now you can see clearly that the camera will be restricted but we want to use the camera as an aiming device because we can those of you familiar with the Phantom 3, the camera on the gimbal moves around like this and it can point straight down. Of course, if you want to see on the other side, you just turn the entire drone around. Uh, so we want it to where we can point the camera straight down and uh, pretty much wherever we point at, that's hopefully where it'll fall depending on the wind. You know, the difference here of what, an inch or two inches, it's going to make no difference when it comes to something actually falling out of the sky. Um, but we want to make the camera have a clear view. So we have this piece of eighth inch thick uh, Baltic birch uh, plywood aircraft grade um, or high, high marine grade also and we're going to use this as our platform to support our dropping mechanism so what we want to do here is get a general idea of where we want the camera to be so this piece of Baltic birch is already the right width um, I'm happy with that um, I'm going to basically just kind of get an idea of where I want where the legs are here and use my wife's little uh, grid that she uses for quilting and we'll take our line away about a half inch from the edge Okay, so we're going to cut this out just on my skill band saw. Um, for those of you who are wondering if this is a good saw, it's not. Don't buy one. It's a horrible saw. Um, I never would buy one again, but uh, oh well, I, I have one. Anyway, so we'll just go ahead and cut this out. Go ahead and uh, just make this look better with the sander. So. so we kind of forgot to show you what we were doing here. Battery died on the phone. Anyway, what we're doing is we actually made a I guess like a support of sorts um, it's upside down right now and that'll actually act as a landing gear or landing feet for the drone that way the when this device is mounted on the bottom here it can open and close and it can land or land or take off without any hindrance I mean this doesn't take into account whatever it's picking up but hopefully whatever it's picking up can just sit on the ground but at least we won't damage the mechanism so that just gives us some clearance there. So uh, we used, uh, obviously you already saw, we used the eighth inch plywood there. But these are actually balsa boxes. It's quarter inch balsa wood uh, glued together with uh, eighth inch balsa wood on both sides. So those little boxes that, I, that we're gluing on right now are super, super light. Uh, but you know, they just need to be strong enough to support the weight of the drone when it's just on the ground. Um, I've gotten pretty good with the drone that I can fly it and land it uh, nicely and, and uh, it's not going to do any damage. So, and then we'll add some bracing here just right now. I'm getting this. Okay, so I'll point it here. So. <laughs> okay, so obviously this looks quite a bit different than the last time you saw. Uh, we didn't do very good at video taping before, but effectively what we did is we made a base for this and uh, we made it so that it could have something to land on while also creating clearance for our dropping mechanism. And uh, we just strapped on the radios and the uh, 
uh, the battery. I'm probably doing something different there. Um, and I'm probably going to paint this up so everything's just kind of temporary. Uh, and I may clean up the wires a little more. But, uh, you know, we just made something for this to, to sit on. But this, you know, still provides movement for the camera and everything. So, so this should be nice and it should work real well. Um, we're hoping. So we're going to do a test here. Um, sorry for the difference in video quality. We had to switch to a phone, excuse me, to a... A regular camera that doesn't actually take as good video as an iPhone uh, because I have to use the iPhone with the uh, DJI. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, power this thing up and, and see what it does. So why don't you back up, Selena? So that's how that's going to connect there, and then when I release it should drop. Alright. So this should hopefully work. So we're just going to set our uh, drop remote up over there. Look like it's going to work? Yep. A little parachute band there. Watch it go down. Alright, we're going to switch this to video on our... Uh, phone. Well, on, yeah. the, on the Phantom. Oh, here you go. <laughs> it went way over there. Woo! Is it going in the street? Oh, no, it's going to your neighbors. Well, looks like it goes pretty far. The drone's still up there. Can't see it very well. You got it. Floated a little bit in the wind, but it worked. There it is. There it is. Pretty sweet, huh? All right, so it was a success. So it dropped well. That parachute man must be very happy. It took it a minute to slide off there. I wish I could uh, have to see about changing the remote settings a little bit. But other than that, I think we have a success. So we'll go ahead and uh, disconnect all this stuff and, and uh, do it again. All right, you can stop.